OK. Um, great, OK, let's begin. Uh, so this course will be about debating in English, quite obviously. Uh, so I should give you a warning now. If you don't like public speaking, and you don't like thinking about uh, writing an argument essay, you won't like this course. That's basically what debating is. You think about how to come up with some arguments, and then you say them to everybody else. So if that terrifies you, uh, I recommend maybe trying a different course. Um, but if you're not terrified or you like being terrified, um, here's what we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to be learning about the parliamentary style of debate. Uh, and I'll explain that a bit later, but this is a more challenging type of debate because you have very little preparation time and you cannot use research material. So it is entirely based on what you already know and what you can think up during the very brief preparation time. OK, so here's what this course looks like. First week, um, the school tells us that we have to make up this week sometime. I'll talk about that a bit later. I have some ideas. This week, week two, Introduction to the course. I'm doing that right now. After introducing the course, I'll introduce debating, the idea of debating, uh, and then I'll introduce our first debating format, Asian parliamentary. Um, next week, starting from next week, we will cover the basics of debating, building a case, Rebuttals and extensions. So rebuttals is how you respond to an opponent and extensions is how you build on what your partner has already said. Clashes and replies. This is unique to parliamentary debating. Uh, I'll talk about that later and then adjudication. Adjudication means being a judge. Um, and then we will have four AP debates, Asian parliamentary debates. The second half of the semester, we will be doing another kind of debating style called British parliamentary. This is a bit harder than AP, but it can also be a lot more fun. Um, so week 12, I will introduce BP debating uh, and the parts of BP that are different from AP. Week 13, I will talk about how to judge a BP debate. Um, and then weeks 14 to 17 will be four BP debates. Um, we will have no class during midterms, no class during finals. Um, and at the same time as I'm introducing these parts of debate, we will also be looking at different kinds of arguments. So beginning from the basic kinds of economic arguments, we will then move into feminism, gender and sexuality. Political arguments. Geopolitical arguments, so otherwise known as international relations. So political arguments have to do with politics within one country. Geopolitical arguments have to do with politics between countries. Uh, and then during BP, uh, we will have one last unit called Arguments from Other Worldviews. Uh, the basic idea is that debating is a very rational and utilitarian uh, kind of uh, activity. So sometimes you will have to argue based on other kinds of values. And so we will talk about that in week 13. Um, here is your score breakdown. AP debates take up 20%, BP debates take up 20%, which means each debate is five points of your total score. And then the other 60% is attendance. Now, 
the reason that I designed it this way is because it uh, this way. If you come to every class, then even if you lose every single debate, you will still pass. But if you cut class, uh, and oh yeah, if you cut class, then you will have to win at least one or two debates in order not to fail. Um, so attendance will be like this. Each uh, week that you miss uh, for no reason, I will take away five out of 60 points. So that means that if you miss well, OK, look, the school policy is if you miss more than one third, that's six weeks, then uh, none of your medical leave or personal leave will count. So for example, if uh, you have three weeks of medical leave and three weeks of personal leave and you come to class every other week, your attendance will be 60 full score. But if you have three weeks of medical leave and four weeks of personal leave, that's more than one third of the semester. So when I log on to the course system, it won't tell me which days are medical leave, which days are personal leave. It will only tell me that you have missed more than one third. So I will count all of those as cutting class. Uh, so if you have three days of medical, four days of personal. That's seven weeks. Seven times five is 35. I will take away 35 points out of 60. Um, of course, if you have other kinds of leave, like um, uh, compassionate leave, um, menstrual leave, that kind of thing, that doesn't count. Only medical and personal leave are changed by the system like this. Anyway, uh, this is a very active class. If you don't come to class, you miss out on practice. And if you miss out on practice, that means everybody else is improving and you're not, which means that it's less likely that you will be able to win a debate. And that will cost you in terms of grades. So, you know, it's a very good idea to come to class. Uh, for this class, there is no materials. Um, I'll basically just tell you things in class, um, but there is a one. Uh, there is one way that you can become a better debater. You are not allowed to bring research materials to use research materials. So uh, to become a better debater, you can learn more about the world and how different things work and how different people think before you debate. That way you have the necessary logic and the necessary knowledge in your head. Uh, to help you come up with better arguments. And one way to do this is to read The Economist. Uh, it, it looks like a magazine, but it's actually a newspaper because it's full of the news, all kinds of news, including economic news, of course, but also political news, uh, social and cultural news. Um, it's a very quick way to keep up on what's going on around the world and why some people are doing some things, why some things make sense, other things do not. Now, of course, every uh, newspaper has its own bias, uh, but I've been reading The Economist for a while, and the bias of The Economist is very close to the bias of ideas that happens in debating. It's you know very rational, data based, uh, for you know utilitarian for the good of the many, that kind of thing. Uh, so even if um, you happen not to agree with what the economist says, uh, it's still a good way to prepare you in debating. Now, uh, the economist only lets you read like three articles a month for free. So there are a few ways around this. Uh, one way is, of course, to subscribe if you have the money. 
uh, it offers a digital only subscription, so you don't have to like wait for a paper copy every week. Um, another way is uh, you can see if our library has a subscription and you can like. Um, you know, you can go on to the Economist website to look for things that you think might be interesting, and then once you find something you want to read, you can head to our library website and to look up that specific article. But there's an easier way. Um, and uh, I just want to tell you I'm not making any profit from the following information. This is simply because I think it's a good idea. There is an app called Pocket. And it works on your phone as well. And what it does is you can save. See, I have some Economist uh, articles here. You can save articles from the Internet into Pocket and uh, it will let you read them using this app. Uh, and especially for the Economist, it bypasses the paywall. So uh, no matter how many articles you have left, you can read the whole article using Pocket. Uh, and if you install it on your computer, uh, you, on your browser, you can have this button here. And so you, if, you, uh, if you click this button, uh, it will automatically save whatever web page you're currently looking at into Pocket. And you uh, you can create an account using your Gmail. Yeah. But again, I'm not making any money from this. This is simply because it's a very convenient thing to do. Um, the, uh, the Economist, I'm not making any money from The Economist either, by the way. Um, they also have like a weekly newsletter of like politics this week and business this week. Um, you can look for that. Uh, it's also like not a bad idea. It's just very short paragraphs about what went on around the world this week. Um, yeah, so that's the course. You know, The Economist, um, the style of The Economist is very brief, very condensed. So uh, you might have to, it might take a few articles for you to get used to uh, its style, but once you get it, uh, the style is very consistent. Every article is written in basically the same way. Um, and of course, you know, you can always use a dictionary. Um, and it's written in British English, by the way. Um, I do recommend, you know, you can go to our library or a library to pick up uh, a paper copy to flip through a paper copy at least once in your life because like there is so much news in a full copy of the economist um, back when i had a paper subscription i could never finish the news each week um, so it, it's always fun to look through and see what's going on around the world um, okay so that's what we're doing in this course do you have questions I'm not just being polite. If you have questions, please ask. There's no such thing as a stupid question. The only stupid question is the question that you do not ask. Um, if you miss something, if I'm talking too fast, odds are that another student also thinks I'm talking too fast. So you can ask and help uh, your fellow classmates as well. So questions, hit me. OK, um, you can talk in Chinese if you want, uh, but you can only debate and practice in English. That's that's the whole point, right? English debate. Um, OK, so there is one thing that I want to discuss with you before we get into this week's uh, content based lecture. Um, The school wants us to alternate weeks, right? This week, half the class. Next week, the other half of the class comes to the room. But that doesn't really work for debate. I mean, it could if we really had to, um, but it's much more effective if we can all practice together. And this class is not very big. 
the classroom I have seen is large. It's incredibly big, so there should not be a health concern. Um, so I want to ask for your permission to apply to the school to change this into an all physical class so that we come to cl the classroom every week. Now, I understand that there are still risks. Even if they're small, there are still risks. So uh, I will only apply if everyone agrees. Uh, so please go to the Teams page and uh, vote. Uh, whether you agree to change this class into uh, a physical class every week. And uh, I have to apply before tomorrow, right which is very, very fast. Um, so please tell me what you think now. OK, so uh, it looks like we'll continue with the hybrid mixed class kind of thing. Uh, and I will think about how we should do the practices. Um, like that. Um, this week there will not be too much practice, so it should be fine. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that later. I think what I will do is I will divide the class into two big groups. Um, so like. Uh, this week group one will be at home. Next week group two will be at home. Uh, and that way you will be very clear about whether you should uh, join a, an online meeting or you should come to class. Something like that. I don't know. I'll think about it. Or maybe I'll just, you know, uh, hold a general meeting and you should know when you should be in the classroom and when you should be online. Shouldn't be too big a problem. OK, so thank you everyone for your responses. We will continue with the mixed class. Uh, the other thing is that first week, right? The school wants us to make up for this week. Uh, I was thinking that we can do something fun. Um, you know, I'm the teacher, so for all of these debates, I will be your chief judge, your chief adjudicator which means I never get to debate. I was thinking that we can. Um, on on like a Wednesday afternoon on week 12. Um, we can hold a debate where um, it's. Three students or four students or five students against me, and then everyone else can can decide who wins the debate. Should be fun, right? Um, so I'm thinking Wednesday afternoon. But that means I have to make sure that you guys are free on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, so let's do that. OK, so please tell me if you are free on Wednesday afternoon to uh, hold a very fun makeup um, class that will not count for your final grade. It's simply for fun. So uh, I, I think it's going to be impossible to find a day where everyone can make it. So that way, if you can't make it, it's OK. Everyone is busy Wednesday afternoon. Very interesting. Um, yeah, OK, if that doesn't work, I'll think of another time. Now, please keep voting, though. I want to know uh, the, every, if everyone uh, is free or not.
OK, uh, and then. Um, let's see, one last thing I want to explain, which is um, this recording will be uploaded to YouTube. Uh, so that students who join our class late can also understand what this course will be about. Now, the reason I'm uploading this to YouTube is. Um, if you didn't know, you can actually search English language YouTube videos. So uh, this is from last semester. If you open an English language YouTube video and you click these three dots. In Chinese, it should be like Wenzi Jilu or something. Uh, click here. And it will use AI to give you a transcript or a record of what is being said in the video in English. Now, the great thing about this is you can search this. So, for example, if I hit Control F or Command F to search in the web page, and I type like uh, right, so I can search this transcript. And if I find what I'm looking for and I click, it will bring me to the part of the video where I say this. So that way. So that way, um, if you need to look something up, you don't have to watch the entire video. You don't have to guess. You can search for it. And that's why I'm uploading this to YouTube and then putting a link to Moodle. So that is the course introduction. Yeah, Wednesday is not a good day. Yeah, so that's the course introduction. Do you have questions? I love questions. Please ask me questions. OK, um, another great thing about debating is. Um, well, because of the pandemic, which is not a great thing. Um, currently, debates are all or mostly being held online. So first of all, it's cheaper to join a debate competition. And you don't have to get on a plane to go there. You can just join from your home, which means that you actually have more chances to join international competitions uh, if you know how to debate. Uh, and that will look good on your uh, resume when you look for a job. Uh, and also it helps out our department because the school really cares about uh, how many students join in competitions and that kind of thing. So if you're interested, um, there are always debates happening somewhere in the world. So if you're interested, you can let me know. We'll put a team together, add some extra practices and then send you off to debate. OK, so that's the um, course introduction. Zidrin, you have a question? Um, yes, um, I want to ask a question that is our debate will be in personal or in group. Ah, yes, so the debating formats will all be in groups. Oh, Asian okay. parliamentary is three people to a group and British parliamentary is two people to a I should say teams, three people to a team and two people to a team. Each debate, you will be teamed with someone else. Um, and uh, we have more than six people in class, so everyone else will be a judge. So uh, like for the debating score, uh, if you win, you get your uh, the grade, right? But if you're a judge, winning means making the same decision as me. Losing means making a different decision. Uh, so thinking that the other team won. So that's how your score will be calculated. Uh, but each week your partners will be different. Uh, each uh, debate, eight debates, right? So each debate your partners will be different. And everyone will debate at least once for AP and BP. So one, at least once for AP and then at least once for BP. Yeah, OK. Wait, so you only get credit, uh, you only get grades only when you're winning? Yeah. 
Why? Uh, <laughs> right. So as I explained, as long as you come to class every week or you know you take leave and you don't take too many uh, take leave too many times, you will pass. Uh, but for these 40 percent. These depend on whether you win. As a debater or as a judge. So there's no like some kind of basic basic points that you get for trying. Uh, <laughs> there is it's it's hidden in there. Uh, I'll explain more when we get to BP. Um, but first of all, as long as you come to class, you'll pass. But secondly, um, AP is three verse three, right? But BP. Ready? BP is two verse two verse two verse two. So the rankings is not win lose. It's first, second, third, fourth. So uh, for BP debates, as long as your decision is not completely different from my decision, as long as some parts match, you will get a basic score. Okay. Uh, and also when you're a debater, as long as you're not fourth place, you will also get a basic score. OK. Uh, other questions? OK, so I'm going to end the recording now.